talk a little bit about the challenges of getting a basketball season started. We've just been listening to Coach Kleiman about what football has had to deal with. Now basketball, a whole new sport opening up here with this pandemic going on and numbers increasing. What kinds of things have you guys had to do that are different in this pandemic as you start a new year? Well, I think our people have been done a great job of, uh, you know, just being diligent and being disciplined, including our players. But, you know, even when you do all that, uh, we still have had our issues with it. Um, you know, it, it's every day is a new challenge. And my wife just laughs, uh, you know, by 8.30, what call I'm getting, you know, from either the trainer or our coach or somebody, you know, a parent, something, what's going on. Um, it, it's, it's, there's so many things involved, obviously the COVID, the contact tracing, um, but also the mental health. I think that's, that's a really big factor. And, you know, I, I just hope and pray for our guys. Uh, I'm not sure how many bodies we'll have next Wednesday, but I hope we get to play for their sake because our whole thing we've talked about since last spring, it was a Doc Rivers thing about winning the weight. And, and we've, had to, we've had to be resilient. We've had to stay with it and, and you know, ups and downs and all arounds. And, and now we're so close to playing. I hope we get an opportunity to play. I know the NCAA called an emergency call yesterday and uh, I talked to one of my assistant administrators and uh, assistant athletic directors and, and he said the first thing he thought, man, they're gonna delay the season or whatever. But they didn't. They were, you know, calling about the NCAA tournament and, you know, trying to, you know, they want the tournament and, you know, what's the best way to do it? Maybe at one place. So uh, it, it's it's been it's been hard. I, I, I will tell you. And, uh, but I I'm trying to, you know, keep the faith. I'm trying to uh, be there for our players. I, I've said many times on on these different interviews. Right now, everybody needs hope, everybody needs understanding, everyone needs a purpose, everyone needs love and empathy, and, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Obviously, you want to win some games along the way, but um, probably more importantly, just to, to be there for the guys and help them through this really tough time. Have you been able to practice the way you want, or have COVID numbers oh. and tracing kind of a well, basketball is played with uh, five guys on the court, and we've had seven in practice. We've had eight. We scrimmaged with refs the other day for the first time. The, the, our, they allowed us one time with big, big eight. I'm sorry, big twelve officials, and we had we had eight guys uh, that could practice. So we played four on four. So uh, it's 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 not a it's different. It's and again, you make the best of it. Try to keep encouraging the players. Um, They've been great. They, they, they've worked very hard. Um, I have no idea how we're going to look when, when we get out there. And I'm sure other people, I've talked to other coaches, I think they have the same, you know, same feel because you don't have the exhibition games. You don't have scrimmages. Um, you, you've been limited with uh, officials. You know, I've been limited with numbers. Um, so, it, 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 again, you just make the best of it. And uh, – you know, hope, hope for our guys' sake, they get to play and, and uh, you know, we can have a season. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, one more one. thing, Coach. One more Sorry, thing, go, Coach. Ahead. go ahead, Karen. Just one more thing, and that is, Coach, you mentioned the NCAA tournament. They're talking, I think they're trying to get everything in Indianapolis, a bubble kind of thing where all the play is there. Just that idea, do you think that is a smart move, or is that on a college level a whole lot tougher than it sounds? Well, I think it's it's going to be it's not going to be an easy task. Just like having a season, it's not going to be an easy task. Selecting teams, if you know, if if what we think is going to happen, where somebody might have 15 games and somebody has 20 games, and somebody maybe doesn't get to play as many. So um, you know, there's a lot of challenges there. But I think the NCA is thinking ahead, and and we even talked about it as Big 12 coaches yesterday. Um, are we thinking ahead if, if, you know, if, if we have a, you know, obviously it's been a big spike, uh, states start shutting down again, lockdowns, can we go someplace and, and still have a chance for a season? So I, I, you know, obviously financially it's, it's not as, you know, you can just say it 
as a coach, but you also got to, somebody's got to back it with the, the finances. So I think the NCAA is, they want, they need, obviously, you know, it's, it's a major money maker. It's also an unbelievable opportunity for the players. It's part of our culture, uh, March Madness. They want to get to it. And, and I think they're trying to think ahead and, and plan for the worst to give themselves a chance to have it. And now I think they feel like if they can limit the travel and have the teams all in one place and really manage it like the NBA did, uh, we have a better chance of having a NCAA tournament, which right now is, the, I think, the number one goal. Thank you, Coach. Yes. Uh, all right, but Bruce, I was going to ask, um, with contact tracing, if even just one guy gets it, how many people would that sideline at a given time on your team? Well, yeah. it, it's, it's, it would usually be your apartment or your dorm. Um, you know, we have two apartments with four guys, um, and then we have the dorms. They have one has two and one has three. Uh, so it, it, it could be as many as that, uh, you know, when you, you know, depending – and then, you know, the big thing, um, there's a bunch of devices now that are out there. Uh, you know, you talked about Coach Kleiman earlier, you know, with football trying to go through some of the stuff they go through. Um, you know, basketball is even rated higher as a uh, COVID spreader than football is. So, you know, we have other things to worry about. But, uh, you know, we've been, for, as I said, we've had to deal with it. Um, in some ways, we've been fortunate. We haven't been shut down. Um, and, and we just got to hope for the best. Um, I believe they're going to, the league is going to say you need six scholarship players uh, to have a game. Uh, we had talked about seven players. Um, it's gone back and forth. And, you know, it, it, this is one time where it, <laughs> You know, walk-ons may be very, very important just to get through a season. And maybe this is over your head, but I see the university's gone ahead and canceled some other stuff for this weekend. Do you, do you know if you're still going to be allowed to have fans for those first couple games? I, I know it's in discussion um, whether they're going to allow it. Obviously, commencement just got, I think, canceled this morning, uh, I was told. And, um, you know, I, I think we're going to – President Myers is – obviously, our state is, is, is not – the state of Kansas, one of the higher positive rate uh, percentages in the country. Um, you know, he's, he wants to be cautious, worried about Manhattan community, our hospitalization, all that stuff. So um, I, I think they're going to make the best decision for the safety of everybody, even, even though we'd love to have fans. Uh, you know, I think the big thing is just that we got to get to games and, and, and that'll help us. It may not be pretty, but it will, it'll be nice just to get there. All right, thanks, Bruce. Yep. Bruce, I was just curious, what are some of the things that you're talking with your team out about on, on like a daily basis and just trying to, you know, prevent cases and staying healthy? What are some of the ways you're addressing that with your team on a daily basis? Well, we talk almost every day, and so does our trainer. Rudy's on here, and they've heard the same speech. Be diligent, be smart. Every decision you make – you know, whether it's going to the store, whether it's going to get your, your hair cut, uh, you know, going to a restaurant, all those things. Obviously, wearing the mask is, is, is really, really important. Uh, that contact tracing, all, a lot of things we – it's so sad because a lot of things we emphasize to our guys about being good teammates and giving rides and, and, and helping guys out and being around them and enjoying each other. It's almost like backwards. You've got to tell them. You know, be careful giving them a ride over 10 minutes because now it's contact tracing. Uh, you know, be careful about, you know, hanging out. Uh, you know, there's so many things. And, and it's been very, very difficult. And that's where the mental health part uh, is, is so it, – it's, it's not just, you know, it, it's for everybody. It, it's really hard. It's very frustrating. Obviously, the vaccine would really help. Uh, if we could get that sooner than later, but I'm not sure it's going to, but we all got to make the best of it. And I just keep telling the players, do you want a season? Do you want to be on the court? You've worked this hard. You might have to sacrifice a little more and be cautious and, and do make great decisions. Um, has the season being this close now kind of 
made things that much more surreal with how things are getting on the outside, having it that close and still seeing how things are escalating maybe around your team and your bubble is, has that kind of escalated your focus and your team's focus on staying healthy and making those good decisions? Yeah, there's no doubt. We, we talked about it constantly. Um, you know, I try to make them aware of things. Uh, some of them are aware of, you know, it, I, I, you know, aware of the numbers because they pay attention because they want the season. Um, so it's just, uh, they're on each other. Um, but again, it just, I talked to our, our doc, Doc Goral's done an unbelievable job, not just for our K-State, but for the Big 12. And, you know, I just said, how did these guys get it? And he, you know, they're, if they're telling me the truth, they, they really have been very cautious. And he said, sometimes you're just in the wrong place. So um, it's like a lot of things in life. Uh, you know, sometimes things just happen and you got to make the best of it. And, um, you know, we just go day by day. And, and try to be there for the guys. And then en enough about COVID, but about your team. Like, <laughs> what, what have you learned about your team in these practices? I know you've said that it hasn't really been the way you'd want to practice, but what have you learned about them from what you've seen so far? Well, they care. They've worked very hard. Um, uh, they, they've, they've gotten better. Uh, I know they're ready for games or something. Uh, you know, it would be nice, a scrimmage or whatever. We had a scrimmage, like I said, with refs. I think that was enjoyable for them even though it was hard and uh, Rudy will tell you 28 minutes of going up and down is very not very easy um, you know especially when you haven't had that game like conditions uh, so it, it uh, you know I, I it'll be interesting with our team I'll be honest I, I wish I could tell you definite um, Mike McGurl Casey um, you know Dejuan Nigel uh, have been you know as consistent as anybody uh, but then and the other guys like Rudy is it's all new to him he's learning uh, Davion I, I said before has been a nice surprise um, you know and and the and the other guys are just slowly but surely getting better I think Mon Monty and Antonio are starting to take some steps to be uh, give us that consistency that you hope from the experienced guys uh, you know so but it, again it's 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 going to be interesting, uh, to say the least, and and you know we'll we'll know more uh, about three o'clock next Wednesday afternoon, uh, what we're what we what we just went through and how we're gonna how we're gonna be as a team. I think it's gonna be a long process. Uh, you know, it, there's gonna be so much. It, you see it in football. Uh, every, every game's a little different, and you you got to be patient. I know I saw Coach Kleiman say focus on the. Mid Mission. And I talk to our guys all the time about it. The mission is to continue to listen, learn, and get better. And that's due. And uh, appreciate every day and make the most of it. Bruce, we're going to be talking to Davion and, uh, and Rudy. Could you maybe talk a little bit about what you've seen from them so far? Well, I think you'll see Rudy has a great smile. Um, he, he, he is just an enjoyable young man. When we started recruiting him, uh, I still remember the first time he didn't have a shirt on. He was in Florida. Every time we were on Zoom, I would just make, tease him all the time about, you know, put a dang shirt on. But I, don't, I know you're strong, but you can wear a shirt. But he's just a, a happy-go-lucky guy. It's, he'll tell you it's been hard. It's a big uh, jump from junior, junior college to this level. And then especially with the point guard, uh, he wants to do well. He, he's tried. He's making strides. Uh, it's the second player since I've been here, other than Dean Wade, that we got to yell at to shoot. Uh, you know, he, he passes up a lot of open shots because I, I just think he's thinking uh, and, and not playing. But slowly but surely, uh, he's starting to make some progress, starting to be a little more aggressive um, every day, starting to figure it out. And uh, – you know, he, I, he's just been fun to have in our program. Um, you know, Davion, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get on or not, but uh, I said he might be the biggest surprise uh, uh, that, you know, so far, uh, Casey Scott watched our scrimmage the other day, and he called me Monday morning. 
And he's first thing he said, we got a big guy that can catch and make plays. So, uh, and, and, you know, he's got good hands. Uh, he, he's worked hard. He's got, again, another young man that has a big heart, good personality um, that wants to be good. Now, is he perfect? No, not even close. But, uh, you know, when you, you see some of the things he does on a daily basis, uh, yesterday he dunked on Joey or, and it, it was like, it was a spin move into a dunk. And I did, he surprised me. I, he does things I did not think he had in him. So uh, I think he's got a, a bright future ahead of him. Just take a couple more questions for coach and so we can get Rudy on. Don't you think Rudy should take off his hat so he looks respectable when you guys tape him? I think so too, Coach. Yes, I thank you. <laughs> coach, are you most – I know you're concerned about a lot as the head coach, but you mentioned it a moment ago with the lack of being able to play open gym, five on five, those kind of things. Is playing those extended times, even with a little bit of depth, your, one of your biggest concerns going into Wednesday? Yes, uh, there's no doubt. Uh, and and I, I asked them – after the scrimmage, what'd you learn from today? And the first thing Rudy rose, raised his hand and said, 28 minutes is a long time. And so uh, it, it, you know, that, that extended minutes and trying to play defense and, you know, get up and down and, and we try to do it, but we have so many limited numbers. Um, the last, last, what, 10 days or so, Rudy will tell you, we have not had, we've only had four guards in practice, so they never get to come out. And I even like make up drills two on two. So somebody gets a, a rep off uh, three on three. So one guy does. And we, we've done five on zero. We've done shooting. I, I just, uh, every day I, I challenge our coaches, think of a creative drill to help me. So it, it, it's just, uh, it hasn't been easy. But uh, our guys have stayed the course. Our coaches have, you know, I told them I could give in and tell you I feel sorry for you and not expect excellence. That was our whole theme yesterday, but I'm not going to do that. I, I want excellence every day. And if you demanded it yourself, we'll be okay. I'm curious as to what you would say about where Shane Southwell is as a coach based on working with you prior and accomplishing so many things and then being gone a year and learning kind of a different way and just how you see where he's at right now in the grand scheme of things. Well, he's obviously he's matured a lot since 10 years ago when he arrived as a player, as a freshman. And, um, you know, he matured as a player in, in my time with him. Uh, and then when he, be, you know, went overseas, I think it was a great experience for him just to have that opportunity. Again, you're, you're always, he's, he's a basketball guy. He loves basketball and he's always learning and listening. So just to play the international game, you, you learn things and pick things up. Cause he, to me, it, I knew he was going to be a good coach, just like Chester Fraser and Brad Korn and Matt Painter and Conzo Martin, because they're basketball guys. They're always studying the game and they enjoy it. And, and, you know, he has a bright basketball mind. He's got a good personality. He's matured. Um, and I, I had to talk to him once in a while. He'll get frustrated like a young, young guy and not be as patient. And, um, and I, you know, it's especially with the players. And I always tell him, remember what it was like to be a player and, and how they, you, you wanted help. You wanted people to talk to you. Um, so, but he's, he's done a great job. I, and I think Rudy will back that up. Um, he's, he's got, he still wants to get in practice and once in a while and show him what he can do. And uh, he can't go very long but, though. It's Toby Keith's song, right? He can do it one time, but he can't do it much more than that. So uh, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, it's fun to have him as a staff. It's great to have a young guy. I think it, it you know, along with J.O. And, and Mason and, and Nate and, and Mike, you get, it's good to have some youth on your staff to have great relations with the players, but also keep us young as, as we go forward. I don't want to hog all the time, but I, I wanted to ask this, if you don't mind. I'm curious with the, again, the limited numbers and, and all of those kind of things, 
Has it been harder installing your offense with a lot of new faces or defense, or maybe it's both? I'm just curious as to what you think. I, there. I really think the defense. Uh, I, yeah. I'm a little bit of afraid. When the coaches, I asked the coaches, what do they most fear uh, the other day? And, you know, each one said something different. And I just said, I, I really, I'm not sure about our sustained defense, transition defense, and, you know, because we haven't gone up and down when they get tired. And we're going to have to do a good job of rotating guys, what you just, you alluded to earlier, Wyatt, kind of three, four minutes, get them out you know, build up some endurance as we go, um, you know, and keep them fresh as possible. And, uh, you know, so that that's, but you still want to win. I mean, that's the goal, obviously. So it's, it, you don't have that exhibition game and scrimmage to go through. So, uh, and well, but again, I'm hoping the other guys are going through some of the same things. Um, I, I, I think our guys have bought into the, our offense and they're starting to learn. Uh, if we can get Rudy to cut a little harder every time and cut with a purpose, uh, I think he'd make some strides and be a little more of a threat. But uh, but that'll come with time. So uh, you know, and then if somebody throws some crazy defense, you know, are we going to be ready for that? Uh, it's just you know, because the the coach's press is not a good press. I promise you that. So it's. <laughs> It's going to be a little different going against some live live action. Thank you. All right. We'll do. Uh, Thanks, we'll, um, is there anybody? Okay. If uh, we'll get. No, I was going to say. You know, one one we're happy that we were able to get South Dakota in the tournament. Four teams. Hopefully, everyone will be here next week, and we get to have the games. Um, excited to be on ESPNU. Uh, both of our games. Uh, that was uh, for our guys. I know that was a nice lift. Obviously, everything's on ESPN Plus. And then to be able to add a game after Christmas uh, with a team that's close and that can bust down and with Nebraska Omaha, um, I think it's a nice uh, uh, lead in, hopefully lead into the Big 12 uh, part two, because we'll already have two games done. But uh, looking forward to next week and uh, we'll, we'll be interested. Hopefully you guys will be able to come to the game and, and we'll see what happens with that. But uh, just hope we have – uh, guys on the court, enough bodies so that we can have a we can have a opener, and uh, we maybe will surprise me and play well. So thank you.